There really is a common perception where people believe that things designed to fly without spin will always be more stable, precise, and accurate if you add spin to them. But adding spin to something that doesn't need spin just adds a lot of complexity to the equation. When you're dealing with supersonic aerodynamics, sometimes keeping it simple is the way to go. For the sake of the YouTube reviewers who really don't know what they're reviewing, there are no firearms in this video. A rifle bullet is a good example of something that needs angular momentum for stability. Without it, it just tumbles through the air. But it is entirely possible to have 100% stability and accuracy without spin at all. As we've learned, the Russians are masters at developing this stuff. One surprising thing we've learned is that some shapes that would seem like they would never be stable in flight actually obtain stability by using their own shock wave. Evidence of this is seen by how the tail kind of bounces off an invisible wall and corrects itself. Another interesting thing we've learned is that the Diablo shape, often used in air rifle pellets, can actually be completely solid without that large cavity that makes it very nose heavy. These also obtain stability through that shockwave stabilization, but at subsonic speeds that's where you would need the nose heavy configuration. And if you use computer models for your design and test them that way, you can actually create a Diablo projectile that is both stable without spin or without that supersonic waggle. Today we'll be testing a projectile called the Skeletonized Diablo. These come from a longtime contributor to this channel, Sartal, with the channel Small Lathe. I want to quickly thank everyone who recently subscribed to his channel to help make it grow into something bigger. Now these weigh in at around 29 grams or just a little over one ounce and incorporate a countersunk allen screw for the tail. Now it's not the exact Diablo shape. A lot of people think that the particular angles and weight distribution of the Diablo is very critical but one thing we've also learned is it's really not. Just getting that basic shape is often all you need. For these tests we will be using a Sabo which will keep it correctly aligned down the barrel and also engage the rifling. Yes, there will be a strong emphasis on spin stabilization in this test. The Scientific Max accelerator is charged up with uh, many gigawatts of, of electrical power. How far away are we? 15 yards. Danny is the launch director today, operating the mass accelerator. That is completely safe and uh, abides by YouTube's rules to keep you safe both online and offline. Okay, I'm ready when you are. All right, here we go. That's an ugly pumpkin. A bloody pumpkin. Well, we've got the spin going on there, but as you can see, that thing is barely stable. The accuracy was not very good. But Danny, using his Jedi mind power, still managed to hit that pumpkin. Pretty gruesome looking pumpkin, I must say. I don't know what's wrong with that thing. <laughs> this is the 10 millimeter printed circuit board. Uh, I, it'll, it'll stop some bullets, but I don't think it'll stop this one. I'm ready when you are. Well, let's see if we can hit it. In this test, we saw a little better stability, but for rifling, that's not very good. Accuracy was, eh, well, a slight improvement from the first test. Okay, so not terribly accurate so far. No, uh, not consistent. Anything interesting to, oh, oh. What's that? <laughs> that's a clean hole though. Strange little thing sticking through there. Yep. I was able to stop a hollow point nine millimeter, but uh, did not stop Saul's huge brass projectile. 
Now one consistency we see is the, the green sabo is being shoved with over 10,000 psi of pressure into that allen cavity. Now this has little effect on the balance or the aerodynamics of this projectile, but it is an unintended uh, condition that we see consistently through this test. Okay, we're still at 16 yards? 15. 15 yards. And you're aiming at the label, right? Go for center mass of the label. Okay, let's see. So far, not very accurate. Close enough, but not ac super accurate. Okay, I am ready when you are. I don't know where that went. <laughs> oh. Well, again, we have decent spin, but the stability is not perfect and certainly the accuracy is not predictable the point of impact i should say in fact both danny and i felt at 15 yards it would be complete luck if we hit anything smaller than this gallon sized jug i can't tell if they're going high they're not they're not consistent you know you can't like one went left one went right one went low i uh, can't can't compensate when you don't yeah, yeah, there's something weird going on. Maybe we'll figure out what looking at the high speed footage. I don't know. In this test, Danny actually compensated by aiming really high, hoping to hit just the bottom of the label. But again, the point of impact was pretty unpredictable, hit really low. Now the big question is, can we blame the design of the projectile or the spin? I don't know if we should aim a little high, a little low, a little left, a little right. I'm going to go for about uh, two and a half, three inches high. Is that last one? Okay, the last like couple it? have been real low. Been low, yeah. All right, here we go. Damn, that hit way low. It hit low, but it hit it. <laughs> Yeah, that screw just wanted to keep going. That's that's kind of wild. My point of aim was clear up here. <laughs> oh, okay. There's nothing more satisfying than testing a projectile that's super accurate. And we were getting a little bit frustrated in this test. So far, the point of impact during this entire testing has been very unpredictable. People were really fascinated by that oak tree out there. For some reason, that's about a thousand yards away. Okay, we're now at about seven yards. Smaller target, but uh, we, I think you'll agree that we need to bring it closer to <laughs> ensure we hit it. Now, admittedly, this is kind of a screwed up test. Uh, you can see that the projectile still kind of fouled up in the Sabo when it impacts. For the next test, we'll use a smooth bore, no spin at all, and see if we can blame Danny, the projectile, or spin for the inaccuracies of these. Back to uh, 15 yards? 15, yes. Okay. But this time, we're going to see how they do without any spin stabilization. We had to switch tubes on our mass accelerator for this Ye one. Yep, yep. And where are you aiming? Uh, bottom of the label. Okay, that's about the center. Let's see if it can even hit it. Okay, we're ready. All right, here it comes and we see problems. It's all fouled up in the Sabo again, just like the last shot, but it shakes it off in the last millisecond. And despite that, using no spin stabilization that everyone thinks makes things better, our most accurate shot was done without any spin at all. I think you'll agree that we gave spin stabilization more than its chance to work, and it certainly didn't. Sometimes spin stabilization works, a lot of times it doesn't, especially in the case of this test. We're always learning new stuff, and I hope you're learning new stuff too. Thanks for watching.
That's a neat shirt you're wearing. Yeah, you guys like that? <laughs> How's it feel wearing a shirt with, with you on it? Uh, <laughs> I am humbled. <laughs> yep. But what, uh, you ordered that, I was going to buy you guys some shirts and then you guys went ahead, went ahead and bought some. But what, I wanted to, I was really curious of the quality of these shirts that we're selling on Teespring. These are nice, these are Hanes t-shirts. Okay. Uh, why don't they say that? I don't think they even say that. I, you know? I didn't see that anywhere. Yeah. I expected one of those little cheap thin ones. Uh, okay. What's what's the deal with the pricing on those things? Because I have them listed for like $20. Uh, they were $19.99 for up to a large. Uh, extra large, I think it jumped up to $21.99. Okay. Or uh, 2X. Uh, I, they like didn't that. tell me that either, you know. Yeah. I want to keep these things, you know, I, I knocked like $4 off the price. Yeah. And uh, I didn't want to gouge people, you know, it's like, it's, it's, it's a t-shirt, an expensive t-shirt, but you're also supporting the channel, yeah, you know, that's, that's... Comparable that's... or cheaper than most of the others uh, that I've seen on there for different people, different things that uh, I've paid up to $25 for. I've seen $25 shirts, you know, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I wanted to, you know, everyone will always complain that something costs too much, but... When you realize that it's it's helping support the channel a little bit, you know, and every dollar helps these days. Yep. If you can't do Patreon, do a one-time deal at least. Buy a shirt. Greg gets a little, or Jeff gets a little bit back on that. And yeah, I think a few dollars, you know. It's signed by Greg, by the way. Mm. Buy shirts, please. We need it. We need it. <laughs> Thank you. 